I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 19, and we're looking at job costing and modern cost management systems. And this is a fairly short module. It looks at job costing for service, not-for-profit, and governmental environments. We tend to think of job costing as being applicable to a manufacturing environment where we're producing products. Clearly, that's the examples I've used thus far. However, the reality is that only about 10% of the workforce is still actively engaged or hands-on in producing a finished product. We've seen increases in private sector services, uh, not-for-profit agencies, governmental entities around the globe. And you may be wondering, well, is job costing even relevant in those cases? They are still highly relevant concepts. Jobs may become more abstract rather than a product. It can be a client, a seat mile, a fire call, things of that nature. Those become the jobs that we need to determine the cost of providing. Direct materials become less significant, of course, but overhead becomes far more significant. For example, a hospital visit may include a large charge for a single pill or a single medication. Actually, that charge relates to not the cost of the pill, but the cost of the services related to the providing of that bill, the facilities and equipment, the administrative costs, documentation, billing, and so forth. There's a vast amount of costs that aren't directly absorbed by a customer in terms of the consumption, but necessary to be able to provide the service that is provided. And so job costing becomes a, an interesting challenge. Traditional job costing allocates overhead based on expected output. It may make more sense, however, to charge based on capacity utilization. That refers to the degree to which an organization's output capabilities are being fully deployed. Let's look at an example for an ambulance company. Assume the ambulance company is capable of making 30,000 calls per year, or responding to 30,000 calls, but actually only expects 10,000. The first thing you may think is, well, that's excess capacity, that's wasteful, but we may need the extra capacity for peak emergency periods, and so a lot of times the ambulances are waiting with nothing happening, and that's perfectly fine, that's part of the model we need to have in place for the uh, security of the people we're trying to serve. Let's assume the cost of this operation is $30 million. The overhead allocation would be $3,000 per call based on the estimated activity of 10,000 calls. Now, that's pretty high. On the other hand, if we base our overhead allocation based on full capacity of 30,000 calls, the charge is only $1,000 per call, perhaps a more measured allocation of the cost. Let's see the significance of this. If we're trying to charge to recover our cost, if the entity based the charge on $3,000 per call, customers might simply stop calling the ambulance service. We may actually generate less revenue and provide lower levels of service. Actual patients would end up paying a great deal as the volume declines. Perhaps a better model might be to charge based on the $1,000 amount. That might be a fair allocation based on assuming we're going to make 30,000 runs. The underutilized or excess capacity, we might try to recover from a tax or a general fee or an insurance type charge that everybody pays, since in a way everybody consumes the service by having access to the ambulance, whether we use it or not during a particular period. So these are just examples of things to consider in a service environment and why job costing can become particularly challenging.